Hello. In this movie, we'll continue adding the surface detail to our shampoo bottle. At the end of the last movie, we just finished creating these curves that we're going to use to create our new offset surface. Before I can make my new surface, I need to do a couple of things. The first is to double check these two curves to make sure they're still tangent at this edge of the surface. That way I know when I create my new surface that it's going to have tangency across this whole edge and it will give me a nice smooth blend. So that's pretty easy to do. And to do that we just go under our Curve Edit Tools and we select Match Curve. And let me switch to Ghosted View so we can see this a little bit easier. And it's asking me to choose the Open Curve to Change. So I want to change this curve and I want to match it to this edge. So here under the command line, it's asking me for surface edge. So I can either match this curve to another curve, or I can just match it to a natural surface edge. I'll click surface edge. It's asking me to choose the surface edge to match to. And I want this edge here. And now it's asking me for a location on that surface. So I'll just bring my cursor down until I get a nice end snap right from this piece. The match curve window pops up, and I have some different options here. I can choose either positional, tangent, or curvature, continuity, for this curve here at the end. I just want tangent, that'll work fine. And the other option is how to preserve the other end, so that would be this end of the arc. So I don't want that to move, so I'll choose positional. I could change it to tangency or curvature. And if this curve was connected to something else, that would make sure it retained whatever value it had going into this. But positional is fine with me because I do want it to stay in that location. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on that one. And I'll just scroll up. I'll hit my space bar, activate the command again. I'll pick this curve near the end, select surface edge from the command line, and pick this edge. And bring my cursor up, click on the end point, make sure that's still set to tangency, and this is still set to position, and then click OK. Now they didn't change a whole lot and that's fine. I didn't really want them to. It was more of a double check to make sure that we were still okay on this edge. So let's go ahead and create our new surface in here. So we'll go up to Surface, Sweep One Rail. I'll select this edge as the rail, that cross section, and then this cross section. And I'll hit OK. Now one thing I did want to note, if we go into the right viewport, we can look at the shape of this new surface. So you can see this edge of the new surface, nothing is controlling it at all. So it's giving me this kind of strange shape here, which is giving me these odd ISO curves. And also, because I don't have a second rail, and I was unable to do the two rail sweep, we don't have an option to make this tangent all along this edge. Normally that would be in this area. So it looks like the one rail sweep isn't going to work for us, so we'll need to create a second rail. So let's go ahead and cancel this. And I'm going to switch to wireframe temporarily, so Control alt w for wireframe. So what I'm going to do is draw a line using the control point curve that snaps to this end and this end. Now that's just a straight line at the moment, and I've set myself up so I can create a curve that gives me a nice arc through here. And the way I do that is I'll now select the last curve I drew, which only has two points, one at the start, one at the end. I'll leave it highlighted. I'll apply the control point curve again. I'll snap once to start drawing it. I'll make sure my midpoint snap is on and click here in the middle. And then I'll drag down near the end and click to end the line. Then I'll hit the Enter key to finish this command. Now the curve that's highlighted at the moment is the previous curve that I drew, the one that was drawn with only two control points. So I can go ahead and delete that. And now if I select this one and press F10 on my keyboard, switch on the control points, you'll see we have one, two, three control points now. So if I come down into my front viewport, you can see we have a straight line. If I switch on Ghosted, you can see this edge of this curve has a little bit of an arc to it. So we want to add just a bit of an arc into this curve here. 
just so that that offset surface kind of maintains its proportion with the existing surface. That looks pretty good. Let's shade this with a ghosted preview. So now we have this curved line inside the surface here. So now we can apply a two rail sweep to this. Let's go to surface, sweep two rails. For the first rail, I'll select this edge. For the second rail, I'll select that curve. And now it knows I've got both rails selected and now it wants the cross section. So I want that section there. And we'll scroll down and we'll choose this section here. This time when I hit enter, you can see my control window looks a little bit different. So if I select the refit within option, you can see I now have some different options for how the A edge is being treated. I have positional, which won't check for tangency, but will just keep these curves riding on this edge so there's no gaps. Or if I click tangency, it's going to make sure that this new surface we're creating is tangent to the existing edge that we're using as a rail. So I can go ahead and hit OK on that one. Now if I go to Rendered Shadows under my preview mode, you can see we don't have any strange kinks going through this area. I'll go back to Shaded mode. And we'll go back to our right viewport. Now you can see in the right viewport, we did overbuild this surface, so now we've got to go ahead and trim this surface back. So I have this curve here, and we're going to use this curve, and we're going to offset it. So under my Curve Edit Tools, I'm going to come down and choose Offset Curve. And I could specify a distance, but if I hit T and Enter, it'll allow me to drag until I get an offset that I like the look of. Make sure your corners are set to rounded or smooth, and that way it'll make sure it maintains that nice radius for you. And I think about there it looks kind of nice. So I click, and I see I've got my offset curve here. So let's select that surface, and we'll select split. And if I select right here, I can pick that extra piece of surface and just delete that. Let's go up in the perspective viewport, and now you get a better idea of what was actually happening there. So we've offset this new surface, and it's offset about three or four millimeters on the inside, but yet we're still tangent on this edge. And also note that I left myself a nice squared edge here, and the reason for that is if we came in, and we could have just drawn our offset curve from this corner, kind of coming around, it's very hard to get a nice blend on a pointed corner. So by having this offset here, I can actually just do a nice, easy two rail sweep using this as my cross section, knowing that we're going to be fully tangent by the time we get back out here, and that that surface will grow and give me the shape I want. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to use a two rail sweep to create this blend between this new surface and the previous body. So we'll go surface. Sweep two rails. Here's the first rail. Here's the second rail. And here's our section. So I did this on purpose. I wanted to highlight kind of what's happening. You can see we have a whole line that's going all the way from top to bottom. So we can't use this as is. We have to make a little adjustment here. And the reason we can't use that as is is we want just this little piece of this edge, and we want just this little piece of this edge here. Currently, this whole edge is considered one piece by Rhino, so it's not going to work. But it's very easy to split the edge. We just go up to Analyze, Edge Tools, and select Split Edge. Now it's asking us for an edge to split. We we'll just select this edge, make sure my snaps are on, and I'll snap once at that end, and I'll scroll down, and I'll snap once at this end. Now this time when I go under Sweep Two Rails, I'll select the same two rails. And now for my cross section, I can choose this part, and because we split it here, it doesn't select the rest of the edge going down. And I can come down here and select this part. And again, because we split that edge right there, it doesn't select the edge going up. So now I can hit Enter. So the first time we did the sweep two rail, when we made this surface, we had one surface edge, and the other rail was a curve. 
so we didn't have any real positional options on that curved edge. Now we're doing a two rail sweep, we're using two edges, so we have some options. So the A is set to tangency, just like it was in the last surface we created, this one here. By default, the B edge is going to set itself to positional because we haven't told it what to do with edges yet. So we're going to go ahead and set that to tangency because I want a nice blend between these two surfaces. And I'll hit preview, and that's going to update itself. And you can see the ISO curves are getting a little out of hand as they go around the corners. So we're going to go in, and just like when we do a blended surface, we're going to give it a little bit more information. So I'll click on Add a Slash. I'll make sure Perpendicular is on under my object snaps. And I'm just going to click once on one edge and then drag my mouse down until I get the word Perp appearing on the other edge. And you can see once I click, that starts to tidy up that edge. And that's going to force these ISO curves to kind of stand up as they go around and give us a better surface overall. And there's no real hard, fast rule for where you click. It's just a matter of if you see the curves kind of laying down and not doing what you want them to, you can go ahead and add some points. You can even add some in the middle of a curve. And if that looks like it's laying back a little bit too much to you, you don't have to use perpendicular. You can click just a little bit up from there to adjust it. And you can always come back and add more points too, to give it a bit more information. So I think that looks pretty good. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and hit enter. It brings back my two rail sweep options. And I think we're okay with everything there, so I'll just hit okay. And let's just switch on rendered viewport to have a look at this. So now you can see we've got an edge that blends out to nothing and has this nice crisp line all the way around it. I'll switch back to shaded mode, control alt s, I'll select these two surfaces, I'll go into the top viewport, and remember this whole object is symmetrical about the zero zero axis. So under my transform menu, I'm going to select mirror, I'll type zero, hit enter, hold down my shift key and drag down, and now I've created that new surface on both sides. So I'm going to join these together. I'll select Join, select the body, and then just click on the parts I want to join together. Now I like selecting them individually like that, because what Rhino will do is I select the individual parts. When I select the part I know is the last part, if Rhino senses this object is solid, it'll automatically finish that command and join everything together. So the fact that when I clicked on this last piece, the model kind of jumped and joined itself together, I now know that I have a watertight model. So if we were to go rapid prototype this, I know that it would work perfectly. Let me switch rendered shadows back on and we'll take a little look at our handiwork here. So again, we've got a surface that blends out to nothing around the front gives us this nice crisp edge for the user to grip onto around the back. So that's the main surface detail that we wanted to add. And that'll conclude this movie. We'll continue adding details in the next movie.